Welcome back everybody. Tonight we're gonna go over our first year seed starting setup. So you guys are gonna get to learn right along with us. So we got this five tier shelf from Walmart. It is a 24 by 36 by 72. It was a cheaper alternative than the metal ones. So we'll see how well they hold up, but it seems pretty sturdy. And then we were gonna do all shop lights this year, but we decided to do our own little experiment. So we got two shop lights up here, and then we got one grow light for the next two shelves. And it's just a cheaper LED grow light that we found on Amazon that had some pretty good reviews. And we can put a link down below so you guys can find it if you want. But the neat thing about these grow lights is they actually are dimmable. So if your plants are getting too hot or getting too big, you can always dim them down. And naturally you can always raise them up if you have to. But I'm pretty excited to see which ones do better because I have my theories. Okay, we watched several YouTube videos on how we should start our seeds. And I mean several. So we're actually gonna do a couple of different seed starting trays, pots, whatever you wanna call them. The actual trays are just normal 10 by 20s. They don't have any holes in the bottom because we're gonna try to do bottom watering. And we got them pretty, I'd say decently cheap from our local farm store. And then our main pot we plan to use is this two and a half inch pot that we got off of Bootstrap Farmers. And as you can tell, they're pretty, pretty thick plastic. So I'm hoping they're gonna last for several, several years. And 32 of them will fit in one 10 by 20 tray. And then we're hoping to have three trays per shelf. Another alternative, because we're trying to be a little resourceful here, is just normal yogurt cups. And we're going to drill some holes in the bottom. See how those go? They're kind of roughly about the same size as a, as a normal two and a half inch pot. And then maybe when they get a little bigger, we might transplant them into these nine ounce red solo cups. And see how that goes. But this is our overall plan. Like I said, it's kind of experimental. So if we don't do well, we'll know for next year what we should do better. Next, we're gonna talk about the different mediums that we plan on starting our seeds in this year. We're gonna actually start with some seed starting mix that we got from Walmart. It has no nutritional value, but because it is so light, not as dense or compact as potting soil, it's gonna allow the roots to spread out a lot easier. And because it has no nutritional value, those roots are gonna be searching for nutrients and it's gonna cause them to spread out even further. And this is gonna give a good solid root system for the plant from the get-go. And then once they sprout, we're gonna use a very small amount of fish emulsion to water mixture. And that's gonna give them enough nutrients to get going until they get their first true leaves. And once they get their first true leaves, we're gonna split them and transplant them into some actual potting soil, which will have plenty of nutrients for them until they're ready to be transplanted into the garden. <laughs> So to carry on our seed starting, I figured we could go over how we plan on marking them. We've heard a lot of people having difficulty with their tags fading, with Sharpies and other pins and whatnot. So we got these tags 
off Amazon. They're just basic plastic tags. But this marker is our little secret. It's actually a cow tag marker and we got it at our local farm store. So the reason why I know that cow tag marker is going to work is because I actually used to work at said farm store and we had to write on a bunch of plastic tags for all of our outside merchandise. And we had the same problem with Sharpies fading and then we'd have to go back over them and it just looked sloppy. So we decided to get a little crafty and try out the ink marker. And let me tell you, them suckers do not fade, at least not for several years. They are a heaven send. They are a little bit on the pricier side. I think that one was about eight or nine dollars, but they do last quite a while. And they actually come with two different tips, so you can use the fine one to mark on something as small as those tags over there. But just figured we would share our little secret of tag marking. So this is our handy dandy seed organizer. It's actually just a 4x6 photo keeper that we also got off of Amazon. And I'm slightly OCD, so I like the colored ones. Today, we're just gonna go over the seeds that we plan on starting inside, which is not many. All right, so now we're gonna go over which seeds we actually plan on starting indoors, which is mostly tomatoes and peppers. To start off, we got two variations of yellow tomatoes. We got Dr. Witchy's yellow tomato, and I've heard a lot of good things about that one, so I'm super excited. And then we got a Sunrise Bumblebee, which is a type of cherry tomato. And yellow tomatoes tend to be more fruity, whereas darker tomatoes are more savory. I myself prefer the lighter colored tomatoes, whereas my husband actually likes the darker colored tomatoes. Next, we have our red tomatoes. So starting from the left here, we have Amish paste tomatoes, which are gonna be our main canning tomatoes. We have Rutgers, which is actually a multi-purpose tomato, but leans more towards the canning side. We have our Bonnie Best, which are also multi-purpose. You could either can or slice those. And then we have our Mortgage Lifters, which are B.O. slices, so they're good for the B.L.T.s. Last but not least for our tomatoes, we have our dark purple slash blue tomatoes. We have our Cherokee purples and Paul Robeson's. They're both multi-purpose, but they are more of slicer tomatoes. Apparently, you can can them if you want to. However, that is not going to happen unless my husband is on the boat because he loves to eat them. Last but not least, we have our peppers. We have our Craig's Grand Jalapeno Pepper, which I got mostly for salsa, but also for normal jalapeno purposes. And then we got banana peppers, because who doesn't love banana peppers? I feel like that's just a staple in every garden. And then we got our Ozark giant peppers, which I'm hoping are going to be some good stuff in peppers, along with to use in general cooking and whatnot. And then we got these little mini bell peppers that are assorted colors. And did I get those just because I thought they were cute and wanted them? Yes, I did. What? I'm embarrassed. What are you embarrassed about? Because I don't want to say. Are you recording me right now? No. Yes, you are.